Can you hear me? Good? Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, so you can see uh, here's a title of my uh, talk, and uh, I think that be a typical research talk. So just let's begin. So hi again, my name is uh, Simon Denier, and uh, today actually I have uh, actually nothing to show to you. Okay. So, um, okay, so before you know why, what do I have? Okay. Uh, so yeah, here's a little bit of my backstory. Actually, I'm a newcomer to Smalltalk, so I have learned the language syntax a few years ago, but actually just the syntax. I didn't learn to program in Smalltalk, because you have to have an environment to program in Smalltalk. And actually, so I have seriously began to uh, program in Smalltalk uh, less than a year ago. And uh, what did I do before that? Well, I did my time in Java, like uh, some of you, I guess. Now I'm almost done. I still need to do a bit of Java. So I have worked uh, five years with Eclipse, with the Eclipse environment. And uh, switching from one language to the other, switching, switching from one environment to the other, well, so it's been uh, quite a shock, actually. So there was some good, there was some bad. So there was some things that I have, uh, it was used to do with Eclipse, but I couldn't do anymore with Faro for example, and there are some things that I couldn't even possibly imagine in Eclipse, which are magically possible in Faro. Uh, still, okay, uh, sometimes I wonder, uh, in one sense or the other, uh, just, uh, oh, what's the first? Okay? <laughs> I'm going to ask, oh, it's wonderful, but what's the first? Okay, so there's some cool stuff. Yeah, like, uh, well, you have live objects, so you have the debugger, you have the inspector. Uh, we have also some very nice new tools for development, like O completion. So for people who don't know O completion, O completion is like uh, the automatic completion you get in our environment, except it's based on your recently edited method. And you get a very you get automatically completion with the free most recent and most uh, adapted item to what you are typing. So it's very fast, it's very efficient, very, very interesting to look at. Uh, then we have some not so good stuff. Ah, I like, okay, typically the stem browser. I don't like it. I don't like it very much. Okay, it's good, but not so good. Uh, typically, what I don't like in the system browser is that you get everything at the same time. You get all the packages, you get all the classes, all the categories, all the method. And when I do something, okay, I go build down to the method, and with that issue, if I want to switch to another class, on your package, you have to go back, take another package, or open a new window, etc. etc. So, uh, what I want to say is that, uh, okay, after a year, I began to have some ideas, I want to do something with this And uh, so, what I will present to you is, okay, some of the ideas I want to implement, and I want to also I want that we share some ideas that we enable, that we enhance, that's more than that we get a new experience for our development. Okay, so the first item I want to uh, talk about is focus. Okay, when I code, what do I do? I do one thing at a time, and I think so the users of the same thing, to be efficient. Coding is task oriented, you do one thing. So sometimes I may browse the system, I may go in one direction, see, looking for a package, a class, okay, I may buy track, uh, try in another direction, I may stumble upon the things which are interesting me. But in the end, I always come back to a few classes, a few methods, and I'm always working on this little set of classes and methods. And unfortunately, well, that's a problem that David talked about. Just after a few clicks, you end up with assist, okay, five, six windows, it's just to browse a few things. Okay, so it's uh, common, it's typical to get like 10 or 20 windows open, and uh, well, right. okay, now I need to go back, I need to backtrack to where I work. And, uh, Okay, why is it? I don't know anymore. Uh, that's a problem. Okay, I can explain to you another problem. Uh, actually, this is my working machine. But this is not my working screen. Uh, on my desktop, I have a 40 inch Apple Cinema display. So it's good, it's very good to display a lot of browser. I, I can display a lot of browser. So I have no problem with okay, uh, Windows pop up everywhere. But there's another problem then. Because Windows tends to pop up anywhere on the screen. So, when I open a browser and I'm looking for the windows and I don't see the new window which is open. So, it's another problem which is typical of the UI in Faro. Okay? We have to work with it now. We have to do something about it. Okay, the proposal for the 
uh, about the focus, it's simply based on the working set. And that's good because they have already started doing something about it, as you said. As a working set, it's basically the set of interesting events and uh, what you are doing your development time. What goes in the working set? Selected items, like your favorite item or selected items for the tax, which we are manually, which we are manually selected. Unsafe items, because if you are starting to do something about the code, well, obviously that's interesting. It should be in your working set. And history items, that means recently broad items. Okay, if you are just stumbling upon it, perhaps it is, it is interesting, so we we'll get it and we can come back to it if it is interesting and select it. But overall, you will not have more than 10 or 20 items in the history. And by 10 or 20 items, I mean like 10 or 20 classes and methods which are displayed in the, in the working set. So, most importantly, okay, you have the working set, but most importantly, the tools should be built around the working set, not around the system where you have all the packages. So, I want a dedicated code editor which is only focused on the working set. I know nothing else but the working set. From the working set, I can start to browse the code, I can start to look for sender, incrementers, whatever classes. And then we go down the tray to find other interesting items. And then I have to develop one interesting item. Okay, I select it, I add it to my working set, I can go back. But I am focused on the working set. That's it. Okay, so another interesting thing, I think, uh, for the working set, that you can share them. Okay, if you are working on a task uh, in a working set, well, you can send it to a coworker because he is on the same task. Okay, and we will, we will have the focus. So it's really like the degree of interest model that you can have. It's a very simplified degree of interest model like you like, can have in the Eclipse with the main plugin, that kind of thing, which are quite automatic. They do the shift, they do stuff very automatically, but kind of very simplified, so it's very easy to learn, very easy to do. Okay, so working set should be the new workhorse for you guys, for you developer. Uh, the second item is Ubiquity. So what do I call Ubiquity in the Faro development? Okay, just that uh, you have some text in the code pane, you select it, and then well, you can do it, print it, inspect it, debug it, you can browse the class if it's a class name, browse senders, browse the parameters. And well, for me it's various. It's a feature that you rarely seen in other environments. Actually you don't see them in uh, some other environment like Eclipse or this kind of thing. Uh, Unfortunately, and not every interaction is so seamless in, uh, in the environment. And in particular, I have some things against menu, uh, contextual menu, because I think that they are less accessible than to mass, for example. Uh, they are cumbersome for most use action, because where well, you can pop up a menu, but then you have to select the item in the menu, so you can see it to make a mistake and, tell, and uh, take the item which is below what you want. Uh, you have to get to some menu to get the most user action because uh, you, don't, you can't customize the menu, this kind of thing. So it's very cumbersome. And they become cluttered with many items. So what is better? What do I want? Uh, for example, uh, you can use a buy menu. So buy menu uh, is the same thing as a contextual menu, except that it has a radial layout and it's uh, restrained to like six or eight items like maximum to get to be efficient. And the, the interesting thing is that it's also consistent. It's made to be consistent. In that the same action will op always appear in the same place. If you click to so open the, the panel, and then you go, you go up, you'll always get the open action for somewhere. Or go you click, you open the menu, go down, you always get the true action. That's kind of thing. That's consistency and that's very interesting. So, my menu is good for most use items because you get just a selection of six or seven or eight most use items. It's also very interesting for most JSON. Like I said, you click, you go, you go, you go right, for example, it opens a browser. You click, you go left, it browses the sentence. You click, you go up, uh, it will open a debugger or launch test. Okay. Another item with it. Ubiquity, and that is what it's about. It's about IMAP. So, technically, what you call control click is called semi modal IMAP or semi modal navigation. Semi modal is that uh, the normal text pane, the like the text pane, but then 
when you push an uh, order, okay, it enters another mode of interaction. And in this case, it's like, uh, it will uh, give you hyperlinks for the items in the code page. So you can get control check rows to get the definition of the motors, like in Eclipse. And when you want to go further, control alt click and you rows references and sender. And that they don't have that in Eclipse. You have to get the contextual menu and get the hierarchy, uh, uh, the crawler hierarchy crew, I don't remember the name. Uh, actually, okay, I just, at one time I seriously considered making an Eclipse demo at this point, but then I realized that's not the topic, so I will not make an Eclipse demo. Uh, so, the important point for me is that ubiquity means seamless interaction everywhere. Uh, interaction with either the keyboard or the mouse, or the mouse plus the keyboard any anything. Because I work with these two items anytime, and I want less to be seamless, whatever the way I, I work with my computer. Uh, the third item uh, I want to talk about is navigation. Okay, so ubiquity, being able to browse anything from, any, from anywhere, uh, it's cool for browsing code. That's cool. But what about focus? Uh, for example, if you try to browse the standards of Echo, so I get that uh, for some of you, it has uh, already happened, even by mistake, because okay, you start to browse scanning and uh, it's easy, and then you click on uh, the wrong sign and you get like the 8000 sender of Echo in the system, and uh, okay, you can't do nothing about that. About that. So uh, it's useless. Uh, do you know, do you want the implementers of the new message in your package? Well, you can't do that in fact. You can get the implementers of new in your either class you're building or in the system, but not at the intermediate level of package. Okay, so we need focus for navigation and searching. And uh, okay, let's consider, for example, the sentence. Okay, I want to look for senders of equal in this class. Okay, and this one, look for implementers of new in package. Or uh, look for class definition of string in the system, system wide. Or look for the methods of creation in its class hierarchy. Okay, I think you began to see the pattern, right? Uh, I think that we can sum up it to uh, look for aspect of target in scope. Okay, let's uh, get it again. Look for sender of echo in this class. Oh yeah, what I call the aspect is sender. Aspect is uh, the, you know, the algorithm to search the target form. The target is echo, and the scope is this, is this class. The next is implementer of two in package. Implementer is the aspect for looking the code. Well, we want to look the code for implementers. New is a target, and package is a scope. And you can follow and express your request in the reverse sentence. And actually, I believe that uh, all the uh, search requests that you can mail in a system like Smalltalk can be expressed with this ODB API. So it's not an API for now. But I want to code it, I want to do it, and I want that this API to be provided to the system that so that the browser can trigger it, so that you can use it in your application, and you can use it in a seamless, in a seamless manner. Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm uh, almost done, and I want just you to remember that uh, uh, with focus and uh, ubiquity and navigation, we want to refer new thorough experience for the developer. Okay, so thank you, and you can do one. Um, I hate to sound like a broken record, but you've really got to look at Dolphin because you can borrow so many ideas from this. For example, what you were just talking about with focus, they have the idea that there's a context and the context could be a package or a number of packages. And you can apply refactorings over that. So it actually sort of says, you know, if you want to rename new, you might not want to do that over the whole system. And they have the idea that if you exceed the, 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 the bounds of your context, it gives you a warning and says, hmm, you look to be doing something that you might not want to do because, you know, you're going to change everything in the whole system and you're exceeding the bounds of your context. So there's a lot, there's a lot of really good ideas that I think you could kind of study a little bit and you know I'm not saying that they've got the best implementation you know there are some things that don't work well but you know I do think that there's a lot of stuff to, to, to look at and, and other things that maybe you haven't thought of. I, 
I think I'm a good tool, a good tool for you. Okay, no problems. Looks uh, interesting, but uh, I think I have an answer. And actually, there is something like that in Faro too. It's called the uh, environment browser. Like you can exactly open an environment browser only on the package, and then all your reference will be scoped to this package. Actually, it's more a problem of the UI, okay, of the, for the user, so the usability of the thing. And uh, opening this browser is not very usable. So really, when you want to do this particular task, you do it. You, you open this browser, which is cut. But I want that uh, this, uh, inter this uh, working set or context get the, the focus in the browser itself. The base browser, the base tool of the developer. And, and that smart context that the previous speaker talked about sounded quite interesting as well. Yeah, but it's actually the same thing. <laughs>